Good morning and happy Saturday morning to each and every one of you. It is now time for the First Baptist Church of Toronto, Pennsylvania's thought for the day. I look so forward to these Saturdays every week so that I can hear God speak to me through his word and then that I could pass on that message to each of you. Again, this is more than just a thought for the day. It is a thought that we need to carry with us throughout the week. I just praise God this morning for his Holy Spirit's presence, that he's with us even as we speak, that he's in the midst of this brief morning message and that he's touching us even as we speak, even as we listen. He's with us and and I am just so, so very grateful for his presence. Amen. Amen for the Holy Spirit's presence. And on today, we are going to be focusing, continuing on the life of Moses, Exodus, the second chapter, verses 23 through 25. And it reads, after a long time, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out. Out of the slavery, their cry for help rose up to God. God hearing their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God looked upon the Israelites and God took notice of them. Amen for the reading and hearing of God's word. Now, last week, we talked about the fact that one bad action does not define us. And, and I truly praise God for that message, for that word, because indeed, sometimes we make mistakes and, and we don't always do the right thing, but it does not define who we are. It's not who we have to be. And Moses showed us that because after he killed that Egyptian for abusing one of his Israelite brothers, he took off, he ran, um, and certainly he found himself uh, in a situation to help someone else. And it was the daughters of the king of Midian. And certainly he stepped in uh, and he protected them when others would not. And so we see that the fact that he made an earlier mistake did not define who he was. But proceeding forward, we hear that the king of Egypt died. And once he died, and, and even before his death, the children of Israel were in bondage. They were in slavery, and they were being grossly mistreated. Ladies and gentlemen, we have all felt the way that the children of Israel felt right here in this situation. We have felt that due to no fault of our own, and truly is due to no fault of our own, we are being mistreated. We are being damaged. We are in bondage, uh, unable to live free. And even as we mentioned last week, unable to even go and worship our true and living God. And so when we find ourselves in those situations, we need to think on God's word. That's what it's there for, ladies and gentlemen. It is there to be an encouragement to us. And I just love this 23rd through 25th verse of um, Exodus, the second chapter on this morning, because it says so very much. It tells us exactly what to do, and it tells us what God's response is going to be. And so the verses tell us over in the 23rd verse, it says, the Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out, certainly, we absolutely need to make a point of letting God know what we're facing and what we're going through. Yes, it's considered crying out, praying, fasting, calling on his name, even shedding real tears. Yes, crying out in prayer. Amen. Crying out through fasting. Amen calling on his name as we cry out the name of Jesus 
Uh, we need to get to a point of understanding the power that's present when we cry out. Instead, you know what we do, ladies and gentlemen? We issue prayers as if God is our butler. God, I need you to get me to here. God, I need you to take me there. God, I need you to provide me with this. And can I have this too while I'm asking? No. Sometimes we just need to let him know what we're going through. Let him know how we're feeling. Lord, I'm in a tough position today. Lord, I'm having a hard time today. Heavenly Father, I seem to be under someone else's thumb. Heavenly Father, my boss is just giving me such a hard time. Uh, whatever it is we may be facing, we need to just call out to him and let him know. Notice that I said nowhere in that set of recitations that we ought tell God what to do. He doesn't need us to tell him what to do and when to do it and how to do it. And I know that we can't resist it sometimes. And sometimes when we pray, we do give out some orders, so to speak. But what we need to understand is we really don't have to. It's, it's a waste of words because all we need to do is let him know what we're going through and, and how we're feeling about it. Because what we will find out is that just like in the lives of the Israelites, God will hear us. So hang on, let me not get too far in front of myself. It says, out of the slavery, their cry for help rose to God. So every cry they offered out went straight up. Well, we know God is everywhere, but, but just allow me this morning. It went straight up, straight up to God so that he could hear it, so that he could know exactly what we are going through. And, and my thing is, is that things go wrong. They, they just do. Uh, and even right now in this world, we see so many things that, that are going wrong um, throughout the entire world and even in our lives. I mean, we see these mass shootings. How can we as Christians not be affected by that? How can we not feel the hurt and pain of both the individuals who carried out the mass shooting and their family as well as the victims. No, we shouldn't just say the victims, but, but we have to understand that that individual is troubled in whatever way who carried this out and that their family will have to deal with the stigma. The people who love them will have to deal with what's going on as well. We need to, to pray for all of them because we're facing so many hard times. Then you got this coronavirus that's affecting us day to day um, and that we are forever being bound by. I mean, we've got poverty in our land that we're being bound by. There's a lot going on. But what I need you to accept on this morning is that there will always be problems. There will always be things that go wrong. But I am here not to be a minister of doom and gloom. No, no, no. I am here to bring a word of hope. A word of hope that we will know that in spite of the things that are going wrong, which are normal, things just go wrong sometimes, that we have a remedy, that we can call out to God in our slavery, in our bondage, when we're dealing with these problems. And then we get to verse 34. It says, God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In short, God heard the children of Israel when they were crying, just like he hears us, ladies and gentlemen. He hears us when we cry and he remembers his promises. In this verse, it talks specifically about the promises he made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but through them as descendants, 
we have been made promises as well. And that's why the word of God is so encouraging because as we go through God's word, we hear all of these promises that God made to us. And it is just such a blessing to hear him say that he is going to bless us from on high and, and that we are to live a life more abundantly. It is just a blessing to hear all of the promises of God because when we cry out to him, he hears us and he remembers those promises. But, but then that 25th verse, the last verse that we're going to hit on today because we're out of time. God looked upon the Israelites and God took notice of them. Amen. He took notice of them. I praise God for that on this morning that he looks upon us and he takes notice of us. So let me give you our thought for the day that we're going to meditate on throughout this coming week. It is that God hears our cries. Please be encouraged, ladies and gentlemen, in knowing that God hears our cries. Amen. That is such a blessing. I feel so hopeful, understanding, knowing, believing, trusting that God hears our cries. I'll leave you with that on this morning. Let us pray our dismissal. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now, Lord, just thanking you for this brief moment in time, for allowing us to hear messages from your word, for giving us this thought for the day. And our prayer, Heavenly Father, is that we would have the hope for tomorrow. Hope in you. Hope in knowing that you do hear our cries. Oh yes, right now in the name of Jesus, we pray that as we face problems and situations that we would never give up, never give in, never become depressed and despondent. Heavenly Father, but always be encouraged in you. Oh yes, oh, we just pray. We just pray knowing that God you hear our prayers mm, and you hear our cries. Yes, in the precious name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen.